Αγαπητοί φίλοι, πραγματικά μου είναι πάρα πολύ δύσκολο να περιγράψω πώ αισθάνομαι αυτή τη στιγμή, γιατί βρίσκομαι στο Παρίσι και δίπλα μου βρίσκεται ο πιο διάσημο αστροφυσικό ολόκληρου του πλανήτη. Είναι φυσικά ο καταπληκτικό Dr. Neil deGrasse Tyson. Dr. Tyson, thank you very much for being on the show. Thank you. Uh, please call me Neil. Ah, Neil, yes, okay. okay. Even better. So thank you, Neil, for being on Astronio, uh-huh. my show. Uh, and Astronio. Astronio, yes. Very good, very good. Uh, Astro is star, you know that. Yes, of course. And uh-huh. EO is the ending of the elementary particles. So we say electron is electronio. Positron is positronio. Oh, okay, so, so Astro is a new particle. It, it's like a, 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 um, a particle made of stars. Yes. It's another, another way to say we are stars, made of star stuff. Beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, Cosmos And is every part. word comes from the Greek. Yeah. <laughs> you know what they say. Even cosmos. Even, even cosmos. It's, it's a Greek word. I think we That's put a, ca- a, a kappa here, right? Yes, yes. it's written okay. with a kappa. Uh-huh. Well, you know so much. <laughs> Have you been to Greece? Yes, once. I oh. very much enjoyed it. Yes. Excellent. Yes, uh-huh. So if you come to Greece again, I will be your personal guide. Oh, you please. Yes, okay. yes. So cosmos is back. Yes, it is I'm back. Ve- I'm very excited For about this. For the third time. For the third time, yes. I know. And the title is Possibly Worlds. Yes. So is this a reference to the discovery of new exoplanets or about new worlds we are going to discover? What, what is it really? It's, it's not only that. That's the first thought because it's in, in the universe. But uh, worlds are, are places not only in physical space, but they could be... Um, places you've never thought about, even right. if they're not another physical space. For example, the quantum world, all right? There's, and which we portray the quantum world, which is very hard to visualize mm-hmm. because there's not a reference image. If you say, oh, let's, we want to show a tree. Well, here are 10 photographs of a tree. Now pick one and use it. Now show me the photograph of the electron. There isn't one or the atom, or the nucleus. So that was a challenge for our visualizers, but the quantum world is one of the worlds. The, the, the world of the human brain. One of my favorite episodes, we, we take you to the discovery of the first measurement of brain waves. Mm-hmm. There was a child who had a brain injury. It's very sad, actually. And I remembered tearing up when we did that episode, just reflecting on the story. It's a brain injury, and there was a doctor who wanted to understand what had happened and invented a way to first detect brain waves by doing so. This is the beginning of neuroscience. Okay? That's a world. In mm-hmm. fact, that's an entire universe inside of our heads. Under your feet, there's the mycelium. This is the electrochemical network of roots among trees where they communicate with each other. This is a recent discovery. And so here we are as humans thinking we're the only ones who communicate or we're the only ones. And you find out that there are worlds hidden in plain sight. All of these come together as part of the storytelling in possible worlds. And I I will not get this quote correct but maybe you've heard it. It goes something like, you want to visit other lands and other places often because when you do, when you come back, you will understand your home for the very first time. Right. And Cosmos is a, is a way to, for us to be exposed to these worlds with the goal of you coming back and saying, I can be a better shepherd of our own civilization. Oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> really poetic, <laughs> by the way. So, uh, speaking of Cosmos, I have... We have to... another camera here. I see. Yes, hey. it's another camera. <laughs> Just a backup. I, backup I camera. I don't want to miss this moment, <laughs> so I got to do everything I can. In case your expensive camera breaks. You got to... <laughs> exactly, exactly. So, I have to tell you that I grew up watching Cosmos by Carl Sagan, and he influenced me great, uh, greatly. Uh, and you're an astrophysicist. And I, yes, 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 exactly. Uh, it's one of the reasons I'm an astrophysicist. Uh, and I, I know he was your mentor, of course. So he used to say that astronomy is a character building experience. Yes. So my question is, how does knowing our place in the universe 
change our lives? How does it change the way we interact with each other in society? I will go further than that and say, knowing our place not only in the universe, but with respect to everything else that surrounds us, the animal kingdom, the plant kingdom, the uh, other humans, other primates, all of this comes together and gives us a renewed, or not a renewed, in some cases a new, not renew, that implies it used to exist, a uh, an enhanced perspective and understanding on who and what we are. Do you know when we went to the moon, we went to the moon to explore the moon, and then we look back. That's Earth. Yes. We went to the moon to explore the moon, and we discovered Earth for the first time. Do you know when the first Earth Day was? 1970, while we were on the moon. That was the beginning of an entire movement to protect Earth. Because oh, nice. there was Earth. I didn't know that. Yes, yes, there was Earth in space with no color coding of the countries. Exactly. It was Earth as nature intended you to see it, with oceans and land and clouds. Not the, the, the globe in your schoolroom. No. No. And so all of a sudden... You know, people had been concerned about local pollution, maybe, but Earth as a system? We, within two years of that, in the United States, we would form the, the um, NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. This is the one that gives us our weather forecasts and all. That was formed in that period. The Environmental Protection Agency in the United States was formed while we were on the moon. Nice. Why didn't we form it in 1960 or 1950? We could have, we just didn't. We formed we had a new perspective. A new perspective. Okay. So, cosmos, we think it's time to have yet more perspectives. Okay? Because yes. we got the moon earth thing. We got. The- <laughs> <laughs> it's time to uh, there's a there's an episode that features bees. There's a world of bees. Now we know they make honey and they flowers. We go beyond that. Okay? Bees talk to one another. They communicate. There's a bee that finds a new location and comes back and does a waggle dance. They they flap their wings and wiggle and jiggle and all the other bees are paying attention. Then they go off and go exactly to that spot that was communicated. So they're not just bees doing random things in their hive. They're having a whole conversation with each other. Wow. And the more we recognize the prevalence of this kind, these kinds of worlds that are around us, I think it first it it forces you to take pause. Or to to check your ego, thinking that humans have some unique place in our thoughts or in our ambitions or in our goals. And then say to yourself, we're all sharing this world with the other life forms. In fact, our ability to survive is intermingled with the health of the rest of the ecosystem. That's that was no that that's a new thought. Think of for most of civilization, we're saying let's just take whatever we want from the environment. I mean, we don't care because we don't. All that matters, the environment matters too. Of course, keeping of course. you alive. Right, right. So this is one of my favorite questions. I get asked this very often. If you could get an answer to one big question about the universe, what would it be? An answer to a mystery. Uh, so let me let me give you what might be an unsatisfying answer to that. All right? I don't lay awake at night wondering what answers are to questions I pose. No, I don't do that. I lay awake at night wondering what questions I don't yet know to ask. Questions that would only arise 
when the research has continued to a point where now there's a whole other point of mystery that right now you don't even know awaits you. And the, That's the question. So it's not the answer I'm looking for. It's the question, the question. that is yet to be conceived. So have you thought of anything? <laughs> <laughs> I'm curious. Yeah, I've, I've got one. Yes. Um, uh, yeah, what does it mean to conceive of the question that you can't conceive? Right? That's a philosophical point. Um, I wonder if we are smart enough to even answer some of the questions we have posed. Or worse, are we smart enough to even know what the right questions are to begin with? Mm. Oh, that, that's deep and very hard to answer indeed. Yeah, and think about it. Does, does, a, does a chimpanzee know to ask, gee, I wonder if the nutri nutritional balance in the food I'm eating will keep me healthy. That's not even a question. <laughs> the chimp does not even know to ask that question. That's it's different. just, does the food taste good or not? Exactly. All right. So what question are we not asking? Because we are just too stupid as humans to even know that that's the important question to pose. Right. Have there been any recent astronomical discoveries that you are very excited about? So you had to love that photograph of the black hole. I was thinking about that when I wrote that yeah. question. <laughs> so that was it's a black hole in a ga distant galaxy, a galaxy far, far away. <laughs> <laughs> a long time ago. A long time ago. Yes. Uh, so uh, it's a galaxy that, um, so for me, that's not only a triumph of science that we um, even knew that there is a black hole there to photograph. But it's a triumph of engineering to pull together the resources, multiple telescopes scattered around the world, bring their resources together to produce this one photo. It's not only that, it is an extraordinary collaboration of scientists. I think international scientific collaboration constitutes one of the greatest gatherings of human talent outside of the Olympics, which you guys invented, <laughs> <laughs> and outside of the waging of war. I mean, think about that. The, we had two world wars where people collaborated internationally. Yeah. Well... Is that really why you want to collaborate, to find better ways to kill one another? Or science is an example, I think, of our species at its best. I agree, yes. It's using our intellect to advance our understanding of the universe, our intellect to improve our lives, our intellect to collaborate. Indeed. So, Cosmos is really science communication on a global scale, on an mm -hmm. unprecedented scale. Uh, so, how does it feel knowing that the moment that you are filming, you know that hundreds of millions of people are going to watch that, and you are going to inspire a new generation of astronomers and scientists? I, I now you're making me nervous. <laughs> <laughs> you, you is, already... <laughs> is that how many people are out there? <laughs> it is. It is. <laughs> um, the, for me, the big transition was going from a classroom, a university classroom, where there may be 300 students, to a camera lens where you don't see anybody. Yet there are more people there <laughs> yes. than in the classroom. Indeed. So in the early days, I put little stickies, you know, the little uh, yellow stickies, yes. with smiley faces on them and I would put it around the camera lens, <laughs> and I would imagine these are people in the audience <laughs> right. that I was talking to so that I could have the preserve the enthusiasm that I would deliver in an actual live setting after enough of that I got better at it and so now um, I've taken it the opposite direction I don't look at the camera lens 
and imagine millions of people. I look at the camera lens and I imagine one person. We're just sitting there in front of a fireplace. We're just talking about the universe. That's nice. So nice. So um, that is my what I wanted to project as host of this show, where when I start speaking, you have a comfort level with me in that journey. And otherwise, there's a distance between us that's unnecessary. Because the science touches us all the same way. So there's no reason for me to be up on high. Come here, son. Let me explain yes. to you. No, 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 no. We are sh I'm sharing information with you. That's beautiful. And that's the heart of science communication. Really. Uh, it's an aspect of it, I think, that, that um, has, can be potent and can be uh, um, related around the world because... We all want to feel comfortable as we learn. You don't want learning to be a chore. Yes. You want to just say, I enjoy. Tell me more. This is fun. Not, okay, let me take notes. So. Right. So I know you've been a science educator and communicator for many, many years. Is it decades? Uh, three decades? Something like that? I'm an old man. I don't know. <laughs> no, I don't mean it that way. Yeah, that's exactly how he I, meant I, it. I mean, you are very wise in this aspect of life. Uh -huh. So, um, you have invested more time into this uh, than anyone I know. And um, you've done an amazing job. You're known worldwide. So, my question is, throughout these years, has there been a moment, a point in time, where you thought to yourself, you know what? It was all worth it. It, it was worth investing all this time into science education? Well, when I see today the rise of flat earthers and the people who think we never went to the moon and it's the painful. people who <laughs> deny vaccines and the people, yeah. and this list goes on and on, all I think to myself is, I have failed. <laughs> <laughs> I felt yeah. badly. Well, so that's one way to look at it. You have inspired so many people. Another way to look at it is maybe it would have been much worse. <laughs> of course it would have been worse. <laughs> maybe we, we could be sad about the way things are, not knowing how much sadder we would have to be if things were worse. So um, my goal is not to be remembered or to be, um, my goal is to empower people so that they can take ownership of their understanding of the natural world and our place in it so that they can then share that message with others. And it does, right. does not ever need to reference back to me. In fact, I already know what I want on my tombstone. Oh, what okay, is I do. It's a quote from an educator, Horace Mann, a famous educator in, in America, and it's, be ashamed to die until you have scored some victory for humanity. Right. Beautiful. Yeah. Indeed. So, Dr. Tyson, thank you very much for being on It's Astronomy. Neil. Neil, <laughs> okay. Neil, thank you very much for being on Astronomy. Right. It's been a pleasure and an honor. Excellent. Thank Indeed. you. And thank I can't you. wait to see you in Greece. Oh, yeah, I, I, will, I will look at heat. That's, you have it. You heard it from here. Yes, I'll be his guide. I'll come knocking on his door. <laughs> right. Okay, and by the way, the reason I want you to say Neil and not Dr. Tyson, that puts distance between people if you come it's, out with your out, titles. It's out of respect, though. No, it's, I don't. I, I, I want to earn your respect, not have. with my titles, <laughs> but with the, the information I share with you. That's the only way I deserve to earn your respect. And you've done this very well. Okay. Indeed. Thank can you. we take a photo? Yes, yes, we can. Μετά τη συνέντευξη, είχα την ευκαιρία να παρευρεθώ στην πρεμιέρα του κόσμο, όπου προβλήθηκε ένα πολύ εντυπωσιακό επεισόδιο για τη μετήκηση του είδου μα σε άλλου πλανήτε. Εκτό από τον Νίλ Ντεγκρα Τάισον, βρισκόταν εκεί και η συγγραφέα των κειμένων τη σειρά, Αν Ντρούγιαν, η οποία ήταν η σύζυγο του Καρλ Σέιγκαν. Η Αν Ντρούγιαν τόνισε ότι σκοπό του κόσμο δεν είναι μόνο η παράθεση επιστημονικών πληροφοριών, αλλά και η καλλιέργεια ελπίδα για το μέλλον τη ανθρωπότητα. 
Θέλω να ευχαριστήσω από καρδιά στο National Geographic για αυτή την ευκαιρία που μου έδωσε και φυσικά τον Νίλ Τεγκράς Τάισον για τον πολύτιμο χρόνο του και την πολύ ουσιαστική συνέντευξη. Θα μπορέσετε να παρακολουθήσετε το κόσμο Possible Worlds από τις 10 Μαρτίου στο National Geographic σε όλες τις συνδρομητικές πλατφόρμες της χώρας μας. Μέχρι το επόμενο διαστημικό μας ταξίδι, να είστε όλοι καλά!